Starting and running a business is hard, but you don't have to do it alone. Whether you're an established business owner or thinking about starting a side hustle to earn extra income, I am here to teach you how to show up as your unfiltered self, level up your business, and thrive as a mompreneur. Let's embrace the chaos and start enjoying the journey together. I'm Amy Tra, and you're listening to the Motivated Mompreneur Podcast. Welcome back into the Motivated Mompreneur Podcast. Today, I am chatting with Almira about all things PR and why as mompreneurs, this is one tactic we can implement that will really skyrocket our success quickly. So with that being said, Almira, welcome to the Motivated Mompreneur Podcast. Thank you so much for having me. And I just, I love these conversations and I love what you do. So thank you. Oh my gosh, right back at you. So before we dive in, tell us more about yourself, who you are and what you do. Yeah, so I have been in the PR industry for 25 years. And it's always kind of so hard to say that, right? And it it, it shows to one how time flies, but also about the breadth of what I've seen in the PR industry, and which is something we'll definitely jump into and to talk about is that what we thought PR was and what it is now, and particularly from a visibility perspective. So we'll get to that. And then, so, you know, just like everybody did upon leaving university, I worked for a big agency. I then moved to the UK, ended up becoming head of global PR for this amazing beer brand. And that was also where I got my taste of entrepreneurship along my career journey. Anyways, fast forward a few years later, I moved back to Vancouver and nobody would hire me because I've been gone for so long, apparently. But that is what put me into the entrepreneurial journey of having my own consultancy. Like literally nobody would hire me. So I ended up as an accidental uh, entrepreneur, but in the PR industry, because that's what I knew. And so I have built uh, one of uh, North America's top boutique PR and social media agencies. did that in 2009. So it was my small consultancy, which I merged with my future business partners, started what was meant to be like more of a lifestyle business and geared to one of North America's top PR and social media agencies. And then um, did an exit, sold the business in 2018. And now I have a smaller boutique PR agency. I'm really built in my dreams and my vision, particularly of how I want my life to be with more flexibility, not because I had kids. It was, I just want to have flexibility and freedom in my life. So it's built according to that value. But now, especially now being a mom, it's, I mean, you know it, all of your listeners know it. Time is precious, both to have with our children and to see them grow up. But otherwise we just ended ended up super burned out, right? And then also in addition to my agency that I have, I work with uh, female entrepreneurs to help them grow and scale their business as well as their visibility. So that's me. I absolutely love it. And I love how you said too, time is precious because that's literally the one thing that money cannot buy back. Our kids are only going to be young for such a short period of time. So really, you know, getting that flexibility and freedom, I think is at the top of our list for- 99.9% of us in one capacity or another. So that being said, a great way we can make this whole business piece run a lot more smoothly is through PR. So why should mompreneurs even bother? Why, why, Why should we be putting PR on our list of tactics that we need to be implementing? It's all about the visibility. And like I said, I'm just going to take you on a bit of a a journey of what PR was, how we understand it, the publicity machine, if you will, and what it is now. So back when I started, it was very much about what we call earned PR. So you either as a PR person or working for a PR company, our clients would uh, hire us to get their story into the media, being radio, TV, or uh, newspapers, print, magazines. And those were the mediums that of communication that existed to be able to get your story out. And back in the day also, I mean, I say that the media industry is so democratized now because we as individuals can do PR, like podcasts or have blogs or things like that. But it was very much held in the hands of the media and their influence and the ability to, you know, you read about something in the newspaper or you see it on TV, you buy it, right? And you can never actually track it. It was very much more about brand awareness But back in the day, like you really could sell a product through, in addition to advertising through PR. Then what happened is that um, the media industries all across the world started to, um, people weren't reading the newspaper as much, or there was like debt and um, conglomerations and stuff like that and consolidation. So what happened was, is that um, that people started, um, uh, sorry, let me just take a step back here. So when all of the consolidation happened, there was less and less journalists. Um, and we started to see other types of media starting to happen, which was like the blogs and then social media. 
So social media, and um, again, going back to it, is, is that our clients would hire us to pitch a, a story to the media. So to get that radio interview or TV interview or get that story covered by the newspaper or magazine. So that's what it was. When everything happened and social media started to come out, that totally changed the game. And because you could put out something over Twitter or a story that could have been interesting to the media before, they'd be like, no, that's a social media story. So I think that's what really changed the game is that there was less media and social media happened. And now, of course, then it moved into blogs. And now, of course, you've got like TikTok, right? So you think about what the, the change of the industry, but it also means is, is that individuals can now have their podcast or have their own platforms. And I think that's the key piece of it when we talk about PR and visibility is what are you saying on your platforms? So yes, absolutely. Pitch yourself to radio, TV, online, blogs, get them to cover you because that's the media's influence. At the same time, what are you putting out as entrepreneurs? What are you putting on in your social media channels? And listen, we, we've probably seen it anyways, is that TikTok is um, not just about dancing, right? Like there's tons of people on there and it's a massive platform for growth. So what are you putting on your channels or on your blog, or perhaps you're writing an article on Medium. And so for example, I think it was two years ago, I did an article on Medium, Confessions of an Award-Winning Female Entrepreneur. And it was talking about like, women don't necessarily learn about money, or I could see all the guys, I'm 45 now, and I would see all of my male entrepreneur friends out golfing while I'm still working. And I'm like, hold on a second, like, what is going on with this picture? Like, I've won awards, I've done all of this stuff, but clearly, I don't have my head as wrapped around money or lifestyle or whatever. Anyways, somebody actually posted my article on LinkedIn for International Women's Day, and that post went viral. So again, this is why you want to do PR no matter what form it's in is, is that increases your visibility. You get people into your tribe. You get people um, following you, uh, starting to hear your message. You're getting your message out. You get to own your message. And that's also what I love about podcasts because they can have conversations like this, right? It's not a three-minute interview. Although, listen, if you're going to be interviewed on Good Morning America, like, that's the PR that you want. Absolutely. But what I love about also the podcast with the other types of media out there is, is that you can have the conversations, you can share your message, and also just meet really great people. And when anybody hears me on your podcast, they might think, huh, I want to follow her. I'm going to follow her on Instagram, become a customer. And then when I put this interview on my social media, you're going to get more people following you, right? And so it's very reciprocal in that sense. So we are um, increasing our own visibility. And just naturally, when you get that piece of content or that interview out there, it's doing the work for you, right? It's like, put it out to the universe and people come. And that's very much what the PR mentality is, is, is that put the, P the, the piece out there, the PR out there, put your message out there, get those aligned clients. Listen, I'm not going to lie. I mean, you may not be the overnight sensation, but the point is, is that you're getting your message out and everybody has a voice. That's the most important thing. And why wouldn't you talk about yourself? We're all amazing. Talk about yourself and have the confidence to say that my story is amazing because I know that a lot of people, especially women, suffer from imposter syndrome. Why would the media want to interview me? Like, you know, it, it's kind of that, well, just like little old me. No, like women are doing amazing things. And the media, first of all, in this era of DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion, they want to hear from women. They need to, right? Because all of their experts are usually white guys. So especially if you're a female of color, please, please do PR because they're dying to talk to you. I'm literally telling you right now, the media are craving these unique stories. So just honestly, go out there to PR. I know it sounds like it's time consuming, but the point is, is that it's something that works for you. Think about it. Leads on repeat. Why wouldn't you do the sales tactic? So in this case, why wouldn't you do the PR tactic to get those leads? Oh my god. That gosh. was a very long answer. I love it though. I mean, literally like so many juicy nuggets right there that you dropped. And I mean, even going back to like back in the day, I had flashbacks to when I was growing up and you would get, you know, the Cosmo and the 17 mm -hmm. and all the magazines and the mail. Yeah. Well, yeah, there was no social media. Like that is yeah. how we consumed. But yes, yeah. that landscape has changed. And I'm really glad that you talked about that and to just owning the authenticity, owning your story, because you bring a unique set of visions and values and morals. Just you bring you to the table and we need you. There is literally so much abundance in this world. And yes, mm -hmm. collaborating and getting out there, it does give us that mutual benefit because mm -hmm. it lets us discover these amazing individuals, these amazing women that are doing these incredible things. And I think most of us come at it with 
just the attitude of serving, serving others, helping others along in the journey. We want to lift each other up and champion each other. But by yeah. integrating some of these PR tactics, it really does do the work for you. Mm -hmm. And the other really important thing you touched upon was overnight success. Mm -hmm. How, you know, we do, we tend to think that, oh, why me? Why, why would mm -hmm. I even bother? Well, yeah. We all had to start at, at ground zero. We yeah. all laid this, our business is brick by brick by brick. It's by doing the uncomfortable, by doing the scary things, by putting ourselves out there and sharing our story. That's what yeah. inspires me is hearing yeah. others' stories. And I know by telling my story, I'm helping the next woman because I want to be the example that, hey, I walked away from my nine to five career that I really didn't love anymore. And so can you, you know, yep. is it easy? Yep. No, but by doing this, it's such an important part of lead generation because number one in lead generation, you have to be visible because you can have the greatest service out there, but if nobody knows you exist, you're, there you go. Right. You're there sunk you go. from day one. So yep. It, it's yep. not as complicated as we're making it out to be. No, no. And I think also getting over ourselves. Yeah. You know, I do talk to a lot of women in business and sales. They're just like, there's the reaction, like there's the visceral, react, visceral reaction about, oh, sales are so gross. It's like, no, 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 no. Like, please change your mindset, your mentality. Sales are actually super fun and it's about building a relationship. You know, I was, humorously enough, I was at a children's gala for a nonprofit organization and the gentleman that I was sitting next to came from the ad industry and the nonprofit organization was my client who did some pro bono work. But basically the man dropped so many F-bombs and like I was having this like awesome swearing conversation, like we're, you know, it's just like that kind of like a bro kind of conversation, but fun, you know? Anyways, he dropped me a LinkedIn the next morning and said, when the F are we working together? and signed a six-figure contract the next day. That is sales. And again, like you talked about bringing you to the table, you know, what is it in bringing our personality? And I think there's also the perspective is, is that for anyone who's listening to this, who's a coach, there's that mentality of the imposter syndrome of, oh my gosh, there's so many other coaches out there. How do I fit in? Or there's, there's a massive level of imposter syndrome and I can talk about it because I felt it is, is that I know I have something special and amazing to say and to give, but there's so many other people out there. I'm going to get good clients. Like what if that coach gets stuck? And first of all, like that's lack thinking. Like you talked about abundance. There's so many clients out there and it's, they choose you because, or your clients choose you because of your vibe. Who do they vibe with? What are you saying? What's your message? Are you in aligned thinking? So you have to, to talk. And apparently, by the way, there's a shortage of 10,000 business coaches in the U.S. So that is like there, there's abundance out there. And but you can't even hope to get a coaching contract if you're not talking about it or doing any PR or showing your difference. Right. And I think it's it, like I said, it's about stepping into that confident energy and that it's not it, it's not gross. It's your story. It's your narrative and tapping into it. And what is it that you have that's so special? And then to add to that is, is I often I talk about awards and this is in my the freebie, which we'll talk about at the end of this, but it's about my top three way, ways to get uh, free PR, but it's about getting awards and women are really reluctant to submit themselves for an award. And I, there's tons of them out there, especially like there's tech ones, there's stuff that, you know, community awards for give back in the community. And I always have to tap a woman on the shoulder. Whereas a guy is like, Hey, I'm applying for this. And again, people want to hear from you. There's actually award categories for female of the year. Like it, it, it's in front of you. And then there's female BIPOC leader, right? It, it's right there. And then, I mean, don't even get me started about when a woman tends to write her own application and the amount of times they have to rewrite it. Because so often they don't take the credit for what they do. They are writing the application and nomination as I was part of a group that did this. It's never, I led this initiative, even if they let it, women don't boast, don't take credit. And you know, these are things we talk about all the time. I don't, I'm not talking about anything new, but we don't take the credit for what we did or what was it? I was doing the application for a girlfriend of mine, who's the executive director of a nonprofit for entrepreneurs. And what did she say? It was, oh yes, I support it all of the board directors in their initiatives. And I'm like, I'm sorry, you supported nobody. You led, you were the ED. 
And thanks to her efforts that, yes, I mean, fundamentally created a strong foundation for the other board chairs, but they had the highest retention rate of any chapter in North America. They had the best integration rates. They had the best membership rates. And I'm like, I'm sorry, can, can we see you lead on there? You know, thanks to my efforts. And for her, it was such a, a change in mindset to be able to take the credit. And it, it, I don't know, maybe women just need to do like, you know, more deep breathing and more uh, yoga to open that throat chakra, right? And just to be visible. But there's something about women just stepping back that has to fundamentally change. One, because of the time in the world where we are at right now, where women are stepping up. But second of all is, is that how do you hope to have your own business if you don't want to be visible? And that's where the PR helps because you get to be visible. Again, very long answer. Thank you for bearing with that. <laughs> but I love it. And it needs said. And we need to hear this message over and over and over until it is the norm until it is yeah. commonplace because how often do we hold ourselves back i forget what the exact statistic is but you know if men are like qualified 60 percent for mm -hmm. a job mm -hmm. they will submit their their application whereas a woman most of the time unless we check every single box on there we're like mm, yeah. no i'm not qualified yeah. for this so yeah. we really do need to start to change the way we think and approach yeah. things and that's where we're going to start to change the narrative yes Exactly. And it also goes down to empowerment. Just like you said, where is our power? Where is our power to create change? And one of the books that I love is Rachel Rogers, We Should All Be Millionaires. And she talks about how women need to be millionaires because that's how you create change. You know, when you have the money, you could you, the, like dollars speak or you can do something politically to create change. But also, I mean, you need to be essentially a hundred thousand dollar household to be able to do anything now, just the, the state of the economy in the world. But even if you make $100,000, there's not a lot left over. And a woman creates change in her family, in her community, and in the world. So we should all be millionaires. Like, it's a fundamental fact. And, you know, I'm all about wealth building and time building and all that stuff. But I never thought about it that way, that we should not only should we all be millionaires, we need to be millionaires. We need to have successful businesses. And part of where that will come in is, is that establishing our own selves as thought leaders, establishing ourselves as experts. You know, and it's human nature that we want to work with the best. So for, for me particularly, I've won a number of awards. So my clients, automatically my credibility is established. I do media interviews, I've won a ton of awards. So automatically my credibility is established. I actually don't do any sales, as I say in quotation marks. My business is all built on referrals. Everybody's coming to me. One, I do have that reputation in the marketplace here, but two is, is that my PR and my awards stand for, you know, they've got the credibility, I've got the backing behind it. And also I get to charge more. Well, you get to charge more and work less, like the dream, right? I feel like I'm sitting on a secret here, but it's really not, you know, is going after that premium market. And I, you know, even get clients on the, the my, because in my coaching business, I work with coaches as well as I call them bricks and mortar entrepreneurs, but they're all like, oh, I want to be really premium and get that premium ticket. And I'm like, okay, but you're not doing anything to put yourself out there. Like, where's your thought leadership? Where's your interviews? Because again, going back to the human nature thing is, is that people will pay top dollar for the best. So don't think of PR as like this publicity, you know, and I mean, I feel like you and I are old enough that we get it. Absolutely fabulous. Remember that show, Ab Fab, where they drank champagne and they were PR people. But the point is, is that it's not about the drinking champagne, get some publicity, rah, rah, rah. It's actually truth to the matter. And you get the credibility and influence of the media that gets you to charge more money. Again, money, time, motherhood. I mean, there's, there's an equation right there. Exactly. And it lets us make that impact. And I love too how you keep going back to sales is nothing more than building relationships. And I know for me, once I changed my mindset to that, I totally removed money from the equation and just genuinely, hey, how can I support you? Yeah. It opens yeah. opportunities. And right there, that yep. that's the game changer. So yep. put yourself out there. Don't be afraid to toot your own horn once in a while. Like it's this is what we have to do. We can't keep ourselves small. small. Yeah. We have to get out there and be the example for the other women that are yeah. not even starting businesses because they're afraid to. They don't think they're qualified to. Your life experience has led you exactly to where you're meant to be in life. Exactly. So, you know, getting exactly. yourself out there, using the PR piece, all of these things, that will catapult you to success. And you yeah. have it in you and you can achieve what you desire 
You just yeah. have to put in the work. And exactly. I think a lot of times too, that being said, as women, we think that the more hustle is going to give us more payoff. But like you said, it's all about working smarter. Uh, yep. yep. It's being strategic and yep. you know, building up that credibility. Boom. Then exactly. word of mouth referrals, you're doing less exactly. work. It's beautiful. Exactly. Yep. And it's also your energy, right? And so that that's part of it is, is that there is the, the spiritual energetic work. I meditate. I'm all about like creating expansion. You know, there's so much talk about embodiment now. And I think embodiment and breath work are where yoga was. However, many I was about to say hundreds of years ago, where did that come out of my mouth? How many decades ago, but it's where in the, the creation and the energy of it and the visualization, and all that stuff. And it, that's half the battle. So if you're having a day that you're just like, ah, oh, I just don't want to do sales, you know, first of all, that's a mindset thing. But second of all, get yourself into the energy of it. And so when you realize that you're sitting in a very expanded space in your body and you have the capacity to do it, you're going to like bang off that podcast pitch really, really quickly. You know, if you can just, and again, I know it's hard for moms, but like clear your mind for five minutes. It actually creates the space to write that awesome pitch to that podcast because if you, and, and it also helps you believe in yourself and have confidence because if you don't have that it's going to cross in the email right and when i teach my p well when i had my agency we would teach our pr coordinators that's where you start in pr about the energy you you type that email pitch with the energy of they want me and you know when you do a, a pr pitch you're it's about three or four paragraphs it says who you are what you do establishes your expertise, what you want to talk about, give a few bullet points with some talking points. And this is the piece that makes me so insane is when PR people or my clients would sign the email with, please let me know if you're interested. No, no, no. That does not say that you are amazing. It is not an energy of they want me. What you're signing it is, please let me know your availability to interview me. Now, what picture are you painting in the journalist mind or in the podcast host mind? Because again, if words are energy, please let me know if you're interested. Well, let's wishy-washy. Yeah, maybe I'll think about it, delete, right? Or please let me know your availability. Oh, okay, all of a sudden you're confident. It comes across like you know your stuff. It makes me the receiver of that email wants to, to, to talk to you. And so when you believe in yourself and have the confidence to be able to do it and you're just like in this like super awesome energy, boom, that's where the magic happens. It's not about having another thing on your plate. It is about, first of all, like do the work, sit down for a few minutes, get into an awesome energy, Totally believe in yourself, write that killer pitch, done. And you know what? You can do that in 10 minutes, right? It's actually very, very easy. But I know with the mental clutter that moms have, because we do, it's like, you know, the shoes need to be bought, but there is Amazon out there and there's Instacart out there. Like I'm beyond grocery shopping at this point in my life. You know, I Instacart, I've got all the memberships that I need. Um, and it's not to say them like crazy spending money and having this, well, amazing lifestyle that I want to have, because like I will get to that next status. But my point is, is that my brain does not function when I've got too many things cluttering it. And for my vision of the life that I'm building for me and my family, it does not involve going to the grocery store for an hour. It just, it can't, it can't. And so I, please, this is not to shame a mom who loves to grocery shop because, hey, people, you know, and I think it's actually important that children go into a grocery store so they can pick their food and vegetables. But I'll do that. Like I'll do a vegetable, a fruit and vegetable run to the local market with my son that takes 15 minutes. I'm not going to do my whole grocery shop because I don't have the capacity to do everything just I want I want a, a really good abundant life for me and my family so exactly but it's being intentional and creating the space to do that and I think that is yeah. so important as moms that we give ourselves that space even if it's only yeah. five minutes yeah. to work on some breath work sit in meditation just clear yeah. our minds that right there that's a game changer because yeah. that's where you will make those breakthroughs. You can work on yes. that self-talk, that self-confidence and start to thrive. Yes. Amazing. Yes. Almira, where can we learn more about you? Mm -hmm. I'm all over Instagram. It, so it's Almira, B-A-L-M for mother, I-R for Richard, A-B for Boris. I always spell it out, Almira B. I'm like, what were my parents thinking when they called me Almira Bardi? And now, like, I love my name. But it was just at one point, I was just like, can my name just be Jennifer, please? Like, this would be much easier. But but I had to own myself and own my name and own my story, right? So that was the thing is, is that, like, I think women kind of wanted to blend in. But no, right now, it's about standing out. Anyways, you'll hear me talk all about that on Instagram. Almira B, catch me there, drop me a DM. Oh my gosh, so good. So be sure to 
hop on there. Everything will be linked up in the show notes. And thank you again for taking time out of your busy schedule. This was incredible. you. You have hyped us all up and keep doing it because we need to hear this message. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. I loved our conversation. It was awesome. All right. Until next time, stop dreaming and start taking messy action. You've got this. Are you loving what you're hearing? Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss an episode. 